Arpeggios are one of the coolest tools we can utilize to create the sounds of chord changes in our improvisation, or to create very melodic sounding ideas in say things like our composition too. But often guitarists struggle to get past just learning big shapes. In today's lesson, I want to walk through 10 levels of how we can visualize arpeggios and construct them in a slightly different way, where we are focusing more on intervals and using them as a framework rather than just learning hundreds of different shapes. Now, it's worth pointing out that today's sponsor is Music Bro. Music Bro is an online educational platform where there are hundreds of courses and lessons based around things like improvisation, but also there are mixing, mastering, composition, and production lessons over there from Awain. So if you are interested in all of these examples today in PDF format, plus two extra levels, then please do check out Music Grow straight after this video. It's worth pointing out as well that all of my courses on my website are currently 40% off using the coupon code BF40. That includes the new Improvisation Roadmap Part 2 and things like fretboard visualization and music theory and harmony from Scratch to Pro, which will tie in very nicely to a lot of the examples in this video. Now, quick spoiler alert before we go into level one. Despite the fact that these are called level one to 10, I would say there is no real way to define each of these kind of levels when it comes to guitar. I would say that all of these examples are things that you could practice for months, maybe even years before they start to solidify in your visualization, and your memory with these things. I do have a whole 10 level series on YouTube there's things like hybrid picking and there is a triads video which you might want to check out as well but remember don't feel like these are going to be quick fixes i always think that nowadays especially with the likes of youtube guitar lessons a lot of people try and make out that there's some quick fix and they're forgetting that in reality it takes years of practice to get good with a lot of concepts and especially when it comes to seeing this fretboard it's not like a piano always remember that okay without further ado let's go into level one then so in level one all we want to do is look at how we actually construct arpeggios so most of you out there probably already know this basic c major chord now if you were to play those notes individually or how i just played them then we could say that those notes have been arpeggiated therefore creating an arpeggio but if you play them all together, then I would say that that is just a chord or the triad in this case. But essentially we need to look deeper and look at how we can construct the arpeggio. So in order to do that, we need to look at all of this in terms of the intervals. So if I take a basic C major scale, if I label that in terms of intervals, I get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then we're back to one. Now to build the arpeggio in this triad form, we need the one, three, and five. And there we have it. That is essentially the formula. Now an arpeggio tends to be built in what we call stacked thirds, and you don't really need to worry too much about that. But an, a way of doing this easily is to take the scale and basically we take one note. So we take one, we skip the second, we take the third, skip the fourth, and then we take the fifth. So the rule is like, take one, skip one, take one, skip one. And there we have one, three, five. And that is essentially it. That is how we build our arpeggio if we're looking at it as kind of a triad. Now, level two would be being able to play these triads regardless of the root note. So I am looking intervallically always for a root. So we could take the one on the low E string. And then I look for three and five. I take that one again. 
135. I take the root on the D string, 135. I take the root on the G string, 135. I take the root on the B string, 135. And then if I was to do this on another string, so say the E, then all I'm going to do is do it as a single string idea. So 135. So essentially there, I have all of my arpeggios in triad form by just viewing this intervallic structure really. And you should be able to see what these look like in relation to that root note at all times. Now, if this is something that you are interested in, then definitely check out my fretboard visualization course that's available on Music Bro or as a download on my website, where we cover how we can construct these in different ways. And I actually further expand that into how we can construct it regardless of which finger we start on, which is a very important way of visualizing these. But anyway, without further ado, let's move on then to level three. Okay, so in level three, we're gonna continue this concept of triad-based arpeggios. And by that, that just means that we've got three notes at the moment. We are gonna expand later on in some of the later levels. But essentially, we're gonna look at all the other available arpeggios, and there's not that many, hint, hint. So the first one, which we should look at, is gonna be our minor arpeggio or the minor triad. So essentially, to construct one of these, it's super easy if you're viewing these in terms of intervals. All we have to do is take the 135, but the three is going to be flattened. All that means is it's taken down a half step. So all of the arpeggio triads that you learned before, all you would do is take that third and lower it by one fret, essentially, moving that down a half step. So we get a minor third instead. So we go to C and we get this. Instead of the major third, we're gonna flatten it. So it becomes this note. And then we play the five. So we've got. If you're viewing this in terms of intervals, that is super easy considering that all of those shapes that we did for the major triads, all we have to think is that one note has been lowered. So if I go to that E string root, it's the same shape, just lower that third. Same on the D string. Same on the G and the B string. Same on the B string. And then for that final challenge, what I'd say is to do it on a single string. Essentially, that is it. How easy is that? It's worth pointing out that on the G and the B string, you always have to be careful. The shape looks slightly different than it does on any of the other string sets. And that is because we are not tuned in for it. Guys like Tom Quayle, my old teacher, this is where his system is amazing because it always looks the same. It just means you can't play open chords like this. You know? So that is kind of the fundamental structure of how I view these triads. Now the other two triads that we've got are actually super easy and not as useful maybe for the intermediate kind of players or beginner players, but let's just cover them anyway. We have diminished and to get a diminished arpeggio, all you need to think is we take that minor arpeggio, the one flat three five, and this time we flatten the five. So if you think this is where the five was, all you do is lower that by a half step. So now we've got one flat three, flat five. Easy, we could do it here. 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 And then you just have to think here. And that is it. The other triad based arpeggio that we can build, it's the final one, is gonna be an augmented triad. And again, for beginners and intermediates, this is probably not as useful, but it's definitely worth knowing if you are like a more advanced player. And all an augmented triad is, or an arpeggio, is we take the one, the major third, and this time we have a raised fifth. So raised just means sharpened or taken up a half step. On guitar, that just means take it up one fret. So if I take a C augmented triad, I get one major third and then the sharp five, so this. Should remember to turn up the volume, but we could do that from every root note as well. have it. 
they are basically the four arpeggio shapes that you really need if you're going to use triads. Now, obviously, we've just looked at that from constructing it from the first finger, from each root. Like I said in the previous level, definitely check out Fretboard Visualization, my course, if you're looking to further expand on that and a different way of viewing them. But essentially, you should always be visualizing these other intervals as part of the arpeggio against the nearest root note that we are next to. So in level four, what we want to do is look at going both ascending and descending, because that is something that is often neglected. So all I'm going to do is take a C major triad or arpeggio that we played before and go up to the octave and then descend. This is one thing that a lot of guitarists tend to neglect. We tend to only ascend or ascend through these arpeggios and we get this kind of sound. People often forget that it's a good idea to practice them the other way. You should be able to construct these regardless of which note you start on. But for now, in this level, I would just think of this and see if you can construct these arpeggios in one octave chunks and two octave chunks, regardless of where you start. So if I was to start, say, here on this low E string, I'd be looking for this. If I was to start on the A string there. If I start on the D string, I can probably get one octave. If I start on the G string, I can get one octave. Or even like this. If I start on the B string, this is where we have to shift position. So we get like... And then if I was to start on a single string, a little bit harder. You could actually think of that in two chunks. You could think of the one and the three, and then you could think of the five and the one. Like this. Now for level five, I think it's a good idea that you practice these arpeggios on single strings. So you really are thinking about how they are constructed. So you could take like, for example, that C major triad or arpeggio just on that low E string. <laughs> take C minor one just on the A string. You want to see where these intervals are this way as well as this way. So by that I mean horizontally as well as vertically in one position. It's just going to be so much more beneficial for your visualization later on. Now this is one thing I should point out that these levels I'm kind of rushing through and essentially, these will take years in some cases to actually go in, in terms of visualization. Like, don't just think that it's an easy, quick fix. I know a lot of YouTube, especially guitar lessons, they talk about the one trick you can do. Honestly, the one thing that people don't mention is that it takes years and years of practice. I mean, I've been doing it this intervallic way for 15 years now. So you think there are still, even sometimes in my visualization, in fact, a lot of times where I get things mixed up or I have to recap and really focus, don't take these quick fixes as like the golden word, shall we say. But anyway, let's move on to level six then. Okay, so for level six then, what we want to do is go back to our C major scale that we did right at the beginning, and we want to actually harmonize this with these triad arpeggios. So basically all that means is that on every degree of the scale there belongs an arpeggio or a chord. Basically, we are gonna take this principle and harmonize this whole scale. So from C, we know that there is a major triad there. <laughs> If we go to the second degree of the scale, what arpeggio do we get? Now, if you're struggling in order to like create these, thinking about them, one way you could do it is to take the scale and basically take that idea of take one, skip one. So imagine now D is one. We'll skip this note, take this note. We'll skip this note and take this note. And now we've got a D minor triad basically there. We can see that is like one flat three, five. Remember, you need to think of D as the root in this situation. So I can take that idea that a minor triad belongs on that second degree. So I have C major, D minor, 
If I do the same thing for E, I'm going to get a minor triad again. So this. On F, I'm going to get a major triad or on chord four. On chord five, I'm going to get a major triad. On chord six, I'm going to get a minor triad. On chord seven, I'm going to get a diminished triad. And then back to chord one, which is major. So you could practice it along the strings horizontally like this. And that is a very good way of doing it. One cool thing to make this a bit more musical is to give yourself a common chord structure. So let's think of easy pop stuff, one, six, four, five. And I could basically go, okay, what is that in the key of C major? One is C major. Six is going to be A minor. Then I have for four F major. And then for five G major. So I could get this. You could give yourself all kinds of different exercises in terms of limitations here. You could keep it on a single string. So you could go, okay, here's chord one. Here's chord six, chord four, chord five. Now remember to do this both ways as well. You could give yourself an exercise where you go, okay, I'm only going to descend. So I could go. Ah. Like this little slip of the right hand there. But essentially that is a good way of getting these arpeggio shapes and making sure you truly can visualize them. Now for level seven, what we want to do is a really cool common exercise that I'm sure some of you might have seen already, but it's to play that whole scale, but not go through on a single string. We want to keep it in one area of the fretboard. So I could take my arpeggios that I know belong on each scale degree and keep it in one area. So I could do this. <laughs> I would apply that every time I can see a root note so I could do it on the E string. It shouldn't matter which finger I start with. Like I say again, check out the fretboard visualization course for more on that. But essentially that is gonna open up all kinds of avenues for you. And we just did it ascending. You could of course change that up. You could give yourself different chord structures. You could give yourself a descending version. The options are limitless in terms of practicing these. But anyway, without further ado, let's move on. So in level eight, I want to look at horizontal based arpeggio shapes. And what's really cool is that with these triads, really, there are only three shapes that you need to worry about. What do I mean about this? So if we are to take that one, three, five, starting from the low E string, we get this. Now in reality, I can convert this same shape to the D and G string. Look how it's exactly the same. And then here, it's exactly the same on the B and high E string too. So I can get this. One thing I mentioned earlier is that you should be able to create all of these arpeggios regardless of which note you start on, whether you start on the third or the fifth. This is a great way to practice it. So there's another shape. If I start from that third, basically I know that I will always get this shape if I view them horizontally. And it will always work. If I go from the fifth, I get another shape, but again, it's always going to work. In this case, we get this. So. Now you could do the same thing with minor. Let's go to chord six, because we know that's minor in the key of C. I could take the one flat three, five, and I get this shape. And then the same thing, same thing. If I go from the flat three, I would get this. If 
I go from the five, I would get this. And there, essentially, you are covering both of those sounds in three octaves, essentially, which is super cool and very useful for breaking out of these kind of box areas, I would say. So let's move on then to level nine. So in level nine, we want to build further than these kind of triadic based arpeggios. And this is where we're gonna introduce seventh arpeggios. So if you're wondering how you construct these, this is super simple. Remember how I said that basically arpeggios are constructed in stacked thirds. If we go another third away from that last note of the arpeggio, the fifth, then we get the seventh. <laughs> So essentially you can take this take one, skip one, take one, skip one, take one, skip one, one step further. So you've got take one, skip one, take one, skip one, take one, skip one, and take one. And then essentially we've got C major seven. So the arpeggio would look like this. And like we did with all of the major and minor and diminished and augmented triads, I would say you need to look at how these shapes look on the fretboard compared to that root and do all of the previous exercises. So you know, there's all of these options. We could go. That's quite hard there. You could do a different version of that shape. And then single string. So that is kind of the key. Now there are basically a number of these, especially if we get into weirder chord types. But for now, I would say you should work on major seven, minor seven, and minor seven flat five, and dominant seven. So these would basically be tying into this level 10. So, so for level 10, I would suggest that you start looking at how you can implement those four arpeggios I spoke about. So you could think of major seven, you could think of dominant seven, you could think of minor seven, and you could think of minor seven flat five. And that actually works as a good kind of cycling exercise. By cycle, I just mean that it repeats. You know, you could go. And you could do that on every string set, you know. focus in on which intervals are changing depending on the chord type. Whereas kind of a bonus, I would say what we need to do really with these seventh arpeggios is look at them within that harmonized scale. So we go back to our C major scale and remember all the triads that we built on each degree. From the first degree, we'd get major seven. <laughs> From the second degree, we remember we had a minor triad, but what we can get is a minor seven arpeggio, and we get this. From the third degree, you would get a minor seven arpeggio again. From the fourth degree, you would get a major seven arpeggio. From the fifth degree, you would get a dominant seven arpeggio. From the sixth degree, you get a minor seven arpeggio. And then from the seventh degree, instead of it being a diminished triad now, we get a minor seven flat five or half diminished. And then we are back to one, which is major seven. Now, remember I spoke about with the triads, you can give yourself different kinds of exercises with these. So you could give yourself a chord structure like that one, six, four, five that we did. Various different limitation exercises, but let's say we do C major seven, A minor seven, F major seven, and G dominant seven, we get this.
I am just running up and down them from those root notes. And whilst that doesn't sound super musical at the moment, if you can't do that, it's going to be very difficult to actually make musical sounding ideas with arpeggios. You know, you run the risk of turning into the kind of typical metal sweet picking ideas, all of these kind of things. <laughs> where it's just the same shapes over and over again in a sequence. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but if you just want to use these arpeggios in a more musical sense, then I would say that you need to start looking at building them from different areas. Now, if you are interested in how you can do that, there's two options. You can check out the extra two levels over at Music Bro. Um, I'll leave that link down in the description. Or if you are interested in how you can construct musical lines with a more focused kind of career curriculum, then check out my brand new Improvisation Roadmap Part 2, where I dive into both these seventh arpeggios and how they work, but also things like triad pairs, which are a super useful technique for really outlining chords in a very musical way, really. It just elevates your phrasing, I think, at least. So remember, all of them are 40% off at my website if you use the code BF40. What is it that you guys would like to see in future versions of these 10 levels? I would love to know. And I hope these give you some ideas of what you should be practicing. My name is Jack Gardner. Thanks again for tuning in. Till next time, cheers. Thank you.